In the upper right hand corner is Whitney R. Harris, an individual who uniquely was positioned to work directly with Chief American Prosecutor Robert H. Jackson at the Nuremberg trial. He presented the case against Ernst Kaltenbrunner and was intimately involved in obtaining evidence against Rudolf Hearst. Ray Diaderio's color photo of Rudolf Hearst, the Commandant of Auschwitz, shows a man who seems very normal. Yet, during the course of his testimony on April 15, 1946, the world would be shocked by the evidence that would be presented at the examination of Rudolf Hearst. After the direct examination, the cross-examination occurred and it was principally based upon an affidavit that had been extracted by our guest, Whitney Harris, from Rudolf Hearst. Here's the story. Rudolf Huss, a man whose testimony continues to haunt the conscience of the world. Colossal blunder by calling to the stand Rudolf Huss as a witness for Kaltenbrunner. Now, Huss, not to be confused with defendant Rudolf Hess, had been the commandant of Auschwitz during much of the war, and his chilling testimony obviously didn't help defendant Kaltenbrunner. If that's a joke, I don't get it. I don't get it either, but it's no joke. The British have him in custody, and they've agreed to transfer him here to testify. Maybe Carlton Brunner just figures he'll look better by comparison. Wait a minute. We're not really going to allow this, are we? Let the guy walk in, say God knows what on the stand, give Carlton Brunner an alibi. Might be a cheap price to pay, though, for the opportunity to cross-examine him later on. During the entire time you were commandant of Auschwitz, did Ernst Carlton Brunner ever visit the camp? No. Not once. Never. Thank you. One minute, please. I commanded Auschwitz until 1 December 43 and estimate that at least 2,500,000 victims were executed and exterminated there by gassing and burning, and at least another half million succumbed to starvation and disease, making a total dead of about three million. This figure represents about 70% or 80% of all persons sent to Auschwitz as prisoners, the remainder having been selected and used for slave labor in the concentration camp industry. The, quote, final solution, quote, close, of the Jewish question meant the complete extermination of all Jews in Europe. I was ordered to establish extermination facilities at Auschwitz in June of 41. At that time, there were already in the general government three other extermination camps, uh, Belzac, Treblinka, and Wolzac. These camps were under the Einstein commando of the security police and SD. I visited Treblinka to find out how they carried out their extermination. The camp command commandant at Treblinka told me that he had liquidated 80,000 in the course of one half year. He was principally concerned with liquidating all the Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto. He used monoxide gas, and I did not think that his methods were very efficient. So when I set up the extermination building at Auschwitz, I used Cyclone B, 
which was a crystallized prussic acid which we dropped into the death chamber from a small opening. It took from three to 15 minutes to kill the people in the death chamber depending upon climatic conditions. We knew when the people were dead because their screaming stopped. We usually waited one half hour before we opened the doors and removed the body. After the bodies were removed, our special commandos took off the rings and extracted the gold from the teeth of the corpse. Is that all true and correct, witness? It was yes. Uh, incidentally, what was done uh, with the gold which was taken from the teeth of the corpse? Do you know? It was yes. <laughs> Will you tell the tribunal? This gold was melted down and brought to the chief medical office of the SS at Berlin. Another improvement we made over at Treblinka was that we built our gas chambers to accommodate 2,000 people at one time, whereas at Treblinka, their 10 gas chambers only accommodated 200 people each. The way we selected our victims was as follows. We had two SS doctors on duty at Auschwitz to examine the incoming transports of prisoners. The prisoners would be marched by one of the doctors who would make spot decisions as they walked by. Those who were fit for work were sent into the camp. Others were sent immediately to the extermination plant. Children of tender years were invariably exterminated since by reason of their youth, they were unable to work. Still another improvement we made over Treblinka was that at Treblinka, the victims always, almost always knew that they were to be exterminated. And at Auschwitz, we endeavored to fool the victims into thinking that they were to go through a delousing process. Of course, frequently, they realized our true intentions and we sometimes had riots and difficulties due to that fact. Very frequently, women would hide their children under the clothes, but of course, when we found them, we would send the children in to be exterminated. We were required to carry out these exterminations in secrecy, but of course, the foul and nauseating stench from the continuous burning of bodies permeated the entire area and all of the people living in the surrounding communities knew that exterminations were going on at Auschwitz. Is that all true and correct, witness? It was yes. Oh, I'm overwhelmed. Essentially, this uh, film is extremely accurate in every respect. And uh, it does reflect, uh, you know, uh, uh, what actually happened. And uh, when Hearst says uh, uh, at the end, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, 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 Himmler said that uh, the Jews were going to destroy Germany. I believed him. And uh, uh, this is my war uh, uh, duty, and I carried it out. He was a man without emotion. Uh, he, he accepted the responsibility that he undertook when uh, he uh, acceded to uh, Himmler's uh, order that he convert uh, Auschwitz from a concentration camp into an, uh, a, a, a murder facility. And that's correct. The film is right.